would seem as if weather like this is no big deal to them. Stellar's jays, with their vibrant blue and black feathers, spunky crest, loud calls, moving swiftly through the forest canopy. I encountered these birds in the same area about a year ago. I wasn't looking for them at that time, but they found me and my bag of trail mix. I pulled it out to have a snack when, suddenly, I became very popular with the local flock. They had been watching me, silently and hidden, high up in the conifers. They knew exactly what they were doing. Up until this point, I didn't even know they were there. I returned this year with the hopes of studying them, and sure enough, they showed up. Of course, this was also with the help of a good supply of peanuts that I provided. They were difficult to photograph and film. They moved constantly, never pausing for more than a couple of seconds. Their actions were deliberate and calculating as they interacted with each other and negotiated around me. They would eye the peanuts, then cock their heads to one side as if sizing me up. There seemed to be complex thought and strategy going on in their heads. They would pack their mouths full of peanuts, giving their throats a noticeable bulge, then fly away. They repeated this pattern over and over. It was obvious that they were curious, smart, and strong-willed. One particular jay started drumming on the log where some peanuts had fallen into a crack. It was determined to break through the splintered wood and not let this bite of food go uneaten. They were in constant communication with each other, sometimes making loud, raucous calls. Other times, they made quiet, delicate warbling sounds when they were close to each other. When you witness birds up close in their natural habitat, it leaves a strong impression on you. It gives you a glimpse into their world, their personalities, the dynamics of the flock, and what they have to deal with on a daily basis. Each time I visited them, the experience would stay with me for days afterwards, and with it, the strong desire to see them again. For now though, you may be wondering where these birds can be found, how they got their name, and other facts about them. I'll address all of that next. Stellar jays are found in the North American West, ranging from Alaska to Nicaragua. They are found in elevations of 3,000 to 10,000 feet. They inhabit coniferous and mixed mountain forests. They love evergreens. These trees provide valuable protection from the elements after deciduous trees have dropped their leaves. Within their range, there are 16 subspecies and numerous variations in appearance. They are separated by differences in the shape and length of the crest, the color of the streaks on the forehead, the amount of black on the head, the shading on the throat, the amount of white around the eye, and body size. So, lots of variety depending on location. In addition to that, occasionally hybrids occur where the ranges of different jays overlap, such as a Stellar's jay crossed with a blue jay, or California scrub jay. When observing them, it quickly becomes obvious that these birds are inquisitive, assertive, and smart. They are corvids, after all. That's the family of birds that consists of crows, ravens, and magpies, and are known for being some of the most intelligent birds in the world. Their name is often misconstrued as an adjective, and while they certainly are stellar birds, they were named after German naturalist George Wilhelm Steller. If you've ever heard of the stellar sea eagle, the stellar's eider, or the stellar sea lion, well, that's him too. They are also known as the long-crested jay, the mountain jay, and the pine jay. Their scientific name is Cyanocita stellari, with Cyanocita translating to dark blue jay, and Stellar's name in the last part. Males and females look the same, though the dark barring on the wings and tail is fainter and thinner on females. Their dark coloring helps them to disappear into the shadows of the forest. Sometimes, all you can catch is a glimpse of one as it bounds from one tree to another. When on the search for them, keep your ears open and listen for their calls, which give away their location. They have many different calls, but there are a couple common ones that stand out. The first is a rapid, repeating note, sometimes described as the weck or shook call.
and then a more scratchy, raspy call. If you're in close proximity to one, you may hear a rattling sound, which is made by the female, or you may hear some warbles and gurgles. And also some chirpy like slurs. They are excellent mimics and can imitate the sound of other animals and birds, such as squirrels, cats, dogs, chickens, machinery, and birds of prey. They have been known to make the call of a hawk when near a feeder to get the other birds to take cover and vacate the feeding area. This is remarkably clever. As true opportunists, they will eat pretty much anything they can get their beaks on. Plants make up about two-thirds of their diet, with animals making up the remaining third. Nuts, seeds, berries, and insects are part and parcel, but so are small animals like mice, invertebrates, and small lizards. They are notorious nest robbers as they frequently consume the eggs and nestlings of other birds. In the fall, they cache acorns and pine seeds in preparation for times when food is scarce. They store food in the ground or in tree bark. They have excellent spatial memories, remembering the location of their cache stores over 60% of the time. And for those that they forget about, they often germinate and become tree seedlings the following spring. They have no problem raiding the caches of other birds, such as other jays, the Clark's nutcracker, or the acorn woodpecker. If they find an available food source, they'll take advantage of it. They don't migrate, though some may move from higher to lower elevation. There's usually something available to eat, even in the winter, though this is partly due to their preparation in the fall. Being smart and resourceful, they know that where there are humans, there is usually food. With their bold personalities, they have no problem grabbing some free food from an unsuspecting hiker, such as myself, or a campground picnic. They have been known to pound away at hard nuts to crack them open, or drum away at tree bark to get food, as you saw earlier. If you want to attract these birds to your feeders, be sure to offer whole or shelled peanuts, which they absolutely love. They also like suet, sunflower seeds, mealworms, and cracked corn. Both the male and female select the nest site and both participate in nest construction. They choose a horizontal branch of a conifer, usually high up and close to the trunk. The nest is made up of plant stems, sticks, and leaves, and held together with mud. The inside is lined with pine needles, grasses, and other soft materials. They have one brood per season and lay two to six eggs per clutch. The pair become much quieter during this time so as to not draw attention to the nest. The female incubates the eggs for 16 days, during which time the male will feed her and guard the nest and surrounding territory. Once the eggs hatch, both will feed the young for another 16 days. After fledging, they will continue to feed the young birds for about another month. The biggest threat to these birds are hawks, such as the northern goshawk, cooper's hawk, and the sharp shinned hawk. When given the chance, a flock of stellar jays will gladly call out one of these predators in a behavior known as mobbing. This is where they all join together, calling loudly to blow the intruder's cover and hopefully drive it away. It's hard not to be captivated by these beautiful and stylish birds. Getting to see them is always a treat and a joy. Of course, it helps to have a bag of peanuts with you, especially if you want to see them close up. Do you have the Stellar's Jay where you live? Or have you ever seen one when traveling within their range? If so, leave me a comment down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.